Hi, the Mud Brooker here. These golden brown bits of deliciousness are something called portable soup. Now portable soup has been around for centuries. It was used as a traveling food in the same way as you would use bullion powder today. It's a concentrated dried meat broth. I'm going to be using beef today, but you can use ham, pork, or chicken just as well. You can't do it with vegetable broth because vegetables don't have any collagen in them and collagen is the key to success for this whole operation. First, as always, the most important ingredient of any recipe is of course alcohol and today, even though it's in a brandy bottle, I will be drinking ginger bourbon. If you'd like to know how to make ginger bourbon for yourself, check out my video on making crystallized ginger. I make ginger brandy in that, but you can use bourbon instead, and it's wonderful. I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon, Benedict Riggers, Kay's Kist, Damian Bamer, Joy Jones, Tiarna Jenkins, and Leo. Here's to you guys, and I appreciate your support greatly. Mm, oh, that is good. Bourbon and ginger go together just fantastically. Get that out of the way. Now, this is a very simple recipe, but it's going to take days to make this. I kid you not. You start off with beef. I'm using beef soup bones. You want to use a cut of meat that has the most possible connective tissue in it. Soup bones, as you can see, have a nice big tendon running through them. This is seven pounds worth. Oxtail would work great, beef shank, ham hocks, pork hocks, chicken. If you can get a hold of chicken feet, if you're making chicken... What are you barking at, you silly damn dog? If you can get a hold of chicken feet, or pig's feet, they have a huge amount of collagen in them, and you're going to want to use something like that in there if you can. Anyway, you, all you need to do is take your meat, this is like I said about seven pounds worth of soup bones, and that dog is going to drive me nuts because he's barking at muck monsters or something silly outside, and just put them in a roasting pan and put some water in the bottom. Uh, maybe a little bit more water than that. good. I'm also going to add some tendons. Since my local meat guy is up to his armpits processing venison this time of year, these are venison tendons, but you can use beef tendons, or like I said, for chicken, chicken feet work great, or ham hocks, pork hocks, and all that. Now, the pieces I showed you earlier, I didn't use tendons in, in them, I just used the soup bones, and it worked out good. But the more collagen you can get into your portable soup, the better your chances of success are going to be. Because it can be a little bit tricky to get it to cook down and dry out right. Now that I have all this in the pan, don't salt and pepper it. Because you're going to make this extremely concentrated. And also don't use roasting vegetables with it, like onions, carrots, celery, that sort of thing because the flavors will change over the long period of time that this is going to be cooked and as they concentrate it can really give it an off bitter vegetable -y taste that you really don't want to have so just plain meat plain tendons if you're going to throw some of them in there and into the oven with this will go for an hour or two it doesn't make too much difference we're not trying to cook it I just want to brown this up a little bit I'll be back when this is browned and we'll start on the next long, slow step of this process. Okie dokie. This has been roasting for a couple of hours. And now we're going to take the meat out, put it in a stock pot. Come here, you. It's all browned up nice. 
my bits of tendon. And, of course, we want all of the juice from the roaster. There's quite a bit of fat in that, but that's okay, that'll come out later. And add enough water. cover the meat. I'm going to put this on the stove, get, bring it to a boil, and then I'll back it down to where it needs to be to cook out for the next 24 to 36 hours. Yeah, it's going to be a while. I'll be back in a little while once this is simmering, and we'll talk later. Well, here we are about a day and a half later, and this has been simmering away. When I say simmering, this is actually more like steeping tea than it is simmering a sauce. You want a real slow, slow boil, just a few bubbles every now and then. And it'll really soak out the flavor from the meat and especially the collagen from the connective tissue. So it's time to fish out all the meat and bones and bits. Now the soup bones have a fair bit of meat on them and you can eat it, it'll be bland because there's no seasoning in it and you've also steeped out most of the flavor. Let me see if I can find one of them tendons, those really cook down good. Yeah, but you make sandwiches out of the meat and eat it up. I wouldn't advise canning it if you tried to can it by the time you processed it for as long as it would need to be processed, it would just be mush because it's pretty soft now. But I'll get these bones out of here. And I'll get set up over by the sink and strain this out and show you what that's all about. But yeah, I'll just kind of pick at that meat over the course of the day and have something to eat for lunch. And all the fat and the bones and whatnot will keep the dogs happy. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. I'm all set up by my sink, and we're ready to strain out our broth. This is one of those venison tendons. You can see how well it's cooked out the collagen from that. It's really soft, and it's pretty much shrunk down to nothing. But that's just what you're hoping for. We want to strain this out good. I use, this is a stainless steel splatter shield. It's a super fine stainless mesh and it works really great for straining out broth and such. After that, I'll put a colander on there. The colander is just there to hold the strainer. If you don't have a mesh splatter shield like that, you can line your colander with cheesecloth and use the strainer to catch the bigger bits. Other than that, it's simply a matter of pouring it through and letting it strain out. You can see the bigger bits there. And the really fine stuff there. What I'm going to do now, you can see there's quite a bit of fat on this. What I'm going to do now is let this sit and cool down to room temperature. That will give it plenty of time to let the fat separate thoroughly. Once it's cooled down to room temperature, I'll put it in the fridge for a few hours 
until the fat is good and hard and we'll peel that fat off and I'll be back when we get to that stage. I left this in the fridge overnight and the fat has hardened up really well so we're going to start getting that off. You want to try and get every bit of the fat off that you can and if you're lucky it'll just come off in one big piece. A little break on you. That worked up good. Maybe we can get a little bit of this back. There we go. Try and get any little tiny bits picked out of there. Now this is a really good sign. This is firmed up to a very nice, very solid gel, which tastes good. You can really taste the beef in that. At this point, I'm going to put this in my slow cooker and I'm going to keep it covered until it melts. Then once it melts, I'll show you what happens next. I got all the bits of fat picked out of there and now I'm going to wipe around the top edge where the fat was. At this stage I would much rather lose a couple of tablespoons of broth picking things out than leave any fat in there. It's important to get all the fat out because fat in your portable soup will eventually go rancid and you don't want that. Done right, portable soup will last well pretty much forever. They've reconstituted portable soup that was made in the 1700s and it was perfectly good. A little bit of fat here and I think I see a little dot floating there. Yep. Get him out, a little piece there and I think I got it. Okay now I'll put this in my slow cooker on low cupboard until it melts. I've got this in my slow cooker set on low. It's been covered. I stirred it every five or ten minutes. And everything is all melted down. But you can see there's still a few little bits of white fat floating on top. It's still cold so it's still solid little bits. What I'm going to do is take a piece of paper towel and gently wipe over the surface and that should get those last little crumbs of fat picked up off of there. Yeah. Okay. Now that's all melted, got the last little tiny bits of fat off of there. Take the lid off, leave it on low. From this point on you do not under any circumstances want this to boil. Don't try and rush it along by turning it up on high and boiling it down for a while. If it's warm enough to boil, it's warm enough to scorch. And if you scorch this stuff, you're done. Throw it away, it's garbage. It will give it a nasty, bitter, burnt meat taste and it will taint everything you try and use it in. So, what we do now is we just leave this on low and we let this evaporate off for a long time, a day and a half, maybe two days, depends on how much you start with. And uh, once we start getting this boiled down a little bit, I'll check in on you a couple of times, and things should proceed from there. Okie dokie, this has been evaporating for about 18 hours now. It's come quite a ways. It's reduced down by about two thirds. We still got quite a ways to go. But my old crock pot has high, low, and off. You got one of them fancy schmancy new ones where you can actually set the temperature. I checked the temperature on this a few times and it runs about 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's where you're going to want to set your crock pot. You see the reflection of my cupboard there. You also notice there hasn't been any scorching. It has a nice layer of clear stuff dried on. And I'm going to scrape that back into my portable soup. And you can 
can see he's got nice little flakes on there. Get in there. So I'm going to scrape that down and I'll come back when we're getting closer to done. This has been evaporating away for 24 hours now. It's going a little faster than the last time. I think it's because it's a bit warmer in the room than it was. And we're at a pretty cool stage now. You see that shimmer? It's trying to form a little bit of a skin over the top of the broth, but at the same time it's melting. And if I can keep this in frame while I do it, if you blow on it, it'll skin over and then melt right away. All of that, cool as it is, means that we're ready to test this and see if we're see if it's done cooking down. What I'm going to do is dip out a couple three tablespoons into a nice little dish and we'll let that sit and cool until it's completely at room temperature. It'll probably take 20 minutes or half an hour and see if it gels on its own at room temperature. If it does, we're pretty much done with the cooking down phase of our project. We'll see how this goes and I'll be back in a little while to see if this is gelled. Well, we aren't quite ready yet. You can see that thickened up quite a bit. But I want that to be a nice firm hard gel after it's been sitting for about a half hour. So, we'll let this go for a few more hours and test it again. I gave this another two hours and as you can see it's got quite a good skin on top so push a little out of the way and we'll try our test again I think this time we're gonna work at this stage it's been simmering for 26 hours and like I say it depends on how much you have to start with and how much collagen you have available it might take longer, it might take less to cook down but I'll be back in about a half hour or so once that has had a chance to cool down and we'll see if it gels the last bit I pulled out to test was a half hour ago it still hasn't quite set but you can see that it's gelled quite a lot along the edges also it made a pretty thick skin last time and right after I pulled that sample out I pulled the skin back and realized I was kind of interfering with it losing moisture so I just kind of pulled her into a pile and let it remelt but I think we're just about done I'll take one more little test just to be sure but I don't think we're going to have to go very much farther I'll take one tablespoon because you want to be sure that this is going to be a solid at room temperature so we'll see how this looks in a half an hour that's just one tablespoon that should set up pretty quickly if it's going to set and if it doesn't I'll keep checking it about every half hour and I'll be back in a little bit and we'll see what happens this is almost but not quite set so I think what I'll do at this point is I'll pull one more sample out and by the time I can tell if that's set, I think we're going to have it. Also, I've skimmed the skin off the top of this a couple times. That's it in the corner there. I don't actually remove it. Like I said before, just kind of bunch it up and let it remelt. But I think we need one more test in just a few more minutes. And then we'll have it because, as you can see, this has gotten, even though it's hot, it's quite thick and syrupy but it's still a nice clear golden brown so nothing is scorched and we're in pretty good shape and you can see there's not a whole lot of it left so 
I think we're just about done. Let me dip out a spoonful. Let that sit for a half hour or so. And we'll see what it does. Alrighty. This is focusing good. This is set up really nice. Really gelled good and firm. So we're done cooking this down. For the last two hours, every 15-20 minutes or so, I've been pulling the skin into the middle and letting it remelt. And what I'm going to do now that this is oops, come here you. See how nice and heavy that skin is. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is pull all this stuff into the middle again. Then I'm going to scrape down the sides of the cooker and turn it off and let it set for a while until it cools down good. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge because it's kind of late at night and I'm going to deal with the rest of this in the morning. Normally, seeing how this will set up at room temperature now, you would just turn this off and leave it sit for a few hours until it gelled up and turned into a nice solid mass. It will definitely firm up nice in the fridge. So, I'm going to do a little bit of scraping and scratching here. Let her cool down, put her in the fridge, and I'll see you tomorrow morning when I pull it out and we go on to the next stage. Here we are the next morning. I took this out of the fridge and let it warm up a little bit. It's still cool to the touch, but you'll see that it's a nice firm gel. What you do now is you cut around the edge Hopefully, I'll be able to get this all out in one piece. Let me see if I can get an edge work loose. A little tight on my camera angles here, so you'll forgive me if I don't stay in frame that well. Get an edge work loose, and it should. Hopefully, there she comes a little bit. It should peel right out. There we go. In one nice big piece. Ain't that cool? The top side's fairly dry, but the bottom's a little bit sticky. So, we're going to put this on a rack on a piece of wax paper. And I'm going to let this sit all day, maybe even overnight and let this side dry good. Then I'll flip it over, let the other side dry for a while. You want to keep it on wax paper for the first probably couple of days and flip it over after the sides have dried their first time around. Flip it over two or three times a day. After a couple of days it should be dry enough that you can take it off of the wax paper and just lay it right on the rack. So I'll be back in a couple three days well, probably about three or four. And we'll take the next step, which will finally be the last step on this, almost. And we'll get this little project wrapped up. This has been drying for five days now. And being the sharp-eyed and clever people that you are, you've probably noticed that it's not the flat, perfectly round thing that I started out with. It's because I had a little problem. The first day I was drying this, it was pretty warm in the kitchen. It skinned over nice on top and I was going to flip it over before I went to bed, but it was soft and sticky enough that it stuck to the wax paper. Well, I figured I'd just throw it in the freezer for a little while, let it cool off, and it'd peel right off. And it did. Problem is, I just, instead of clearing off a nice flat spot in the freezer, I just stuck it in there on top of some other things and it was soft enough that it kind of flowed a bit to one side. This side is now a good bit thicker than the other and it hasn't dried all the way through yet. It's still a little bit jelly feeling. This side though is fairly stiff. It's a little bit flexible yet 
and this is ready to be cut up and put in a jar and stored. So what I'm going to do is cut this part off and I'll cut this into pieces and deal with it later and let it dry a little longer. So you just cut this up with a pair of kitchen shears. And deal with him. And like I said, you can see it's pretty leathery, pretty stiff. Now this will keep shrinking and drying for quite a while yet. When you store it, you want to be able to let it breathe. So I use a jar with a couple layers of cheesecloth and a ring on top. You can tie the cheesecloth on or use a rubber band or whatever. But you want to be able to breathe because otherwise the moisture will accumulate and it might get moldy. And you don't want moldy portable soup. Stored properly though, this stuff will last forever. Like I said earlier, there have been bits of portable soup from the 1700s that have been reconstituted and are perfectly fine. Now you might be wondering, after all of this time and fooling around with this, what can I use this for? Well, it's fan it makes a really nice broth. If you want a cup of broth, you just go ahead and boil some water, give it a pinch of, of uh, salt, a little bit of pepper because this isn't seasoned, remember. A little salt and pepper and it makes a wonderful broth. You can also add it to soups and stews to make it richer and more flavorful because this has a pretty strong beef flavor. So if you like to strengthen up your broth a little bit, you can use it for that. Pretty much anything you would use commercial bullion cubes or bullion powder for. Get this all cut up. And th like I said, this will continue to dry and shrink for a while yet. So if you have a nice jar full, and you come back in a couple of weeks, and you notice there looks like there's some missing, but you haven't used any, it's because it shrank. Even though this can take a week or more to make, there's really only about 20 minutes of actual work involved. Most of it is just letting it sit there and do its thing. The only time it really needs any attention is the last hour or so of cooking it down when you have to check and see if it's ready to be taken off the heat. And there you have it. Portable soup. A great way to use up extra bones, meat scraps, turn them into something wonderful that's going to last you for a long, long time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.